At the end of my last video, I alluded to that we could use inert electrodes to measure other half reactions as the indicator electrode during potentiometry measurements. Um, so I guess I should explain how that works. So suppose we have our, again, our reference electrode cell. So here's my reference electrode, which I, you know, could be SE, could be silver, silver chloride, whatever you want. And then we have our salt bridge. And then in this case, suppose our analyte wanted to measure the potential between uh, one example is cerium-4 and cerium-3. So cerium-4 plus could re be reduced to cerium-3 plus, both aqueous. And then so we could use our inert electrode, let's say platinum. And then so this will be our indicator electrode. Oops. So this will be indicator. And then this would be our analyte. So this combination. So in this case, the key half reaction is this half, uh, this analyte. So our half reaction is going from cerium four plus plus electron going to cerium three plus, and this should be at some known concentration, no, some known standard reduction potential rather. And then so from this, we could then calculate again. So the same idea. If we have our indicator potential, which we calculate by taking the cell potentials and um, uh, calculating from the cell potential and the reference electrode potential, this is going to be equal to whatever E naught is of cerium 4 plus cerium 3 plus minus RT over, you know, 1F times the natural log of cerium 3 plus over cerium 4 plus. So in this case, our platinum electrode is not participating in this half reaction. So this just uh, serves to measure this ratio. So we can't measure the direct concentration. We'll have just have a ratio of concentrations from our Nernst equation. So the reason I mentioned this is because what about protons? I mentioned before that potentiometry is a good way to measure proton concentration for a pH meter. The problem is, uh, the half reaction that protons would have to be participating in would be the only half reaction that it could do would be two protons plus two electrons going to hydrogen gas. So you could do this, but it might be you know too complicated to do. You, if you have an open system, your hydrogen gas is constantly going away. This would not be an accurate measure for this re half reaction. So this is kind of like a not a useful, not a useful half reaction. So the way the pH meter actually works is actually quite interesting, which is why I want to make a special point of it. So what it does is it uses a so-called membrane electrode as the indicator electrode. And what it is is you have some sort of glass tube, and then you have your electrode coming down. And then what you have at the very bottom is a kind of thin glass membrane. So. This is our thin glass membrane. And then, of course, this whole thing is in my beaker of whatever thing that I want to measure. And then, so if my solution, let's say my lemon juice, you know, is here, and we want to know our pH. So this is the question is pH. So within this glass, tube, uh, this glass bulb, so we have some sort of here, here's my thing, and then within this, there is some solution. And then one possibility for the solution inside would be one molar HCl. And then this is my electrode wire, electrode wire. And then this could be over here. Uh, this might be my a silver silver chloride reference electrode. And then so what they found uh, so many years ago was that as you change the pH within your outer solution, this silver silver chloride electrode can feel that. And what the indicator electrode will change, the potential will change in a Nernstian fashion with pH. Um, so uh, basically, our overall cell in this case is a little bit more complicated. 
So our cell is, uh, so on, let's say on the left side for our reference electrode, we have standard Kalman electrodes. So we're going to have, uh, let's say, our mercury, mercury chloride. So this is our SCE. This is our E ref. Um, OK, phase boundary. So standard Kalman level electrode also has aqueous KCl. And then we have our salt bridge. And then so here's our analyte. So this will be our analyte. OK, um, I've kind of run off the screen. But there's a phase boundary here. Hopefully you can see that. And then in this case here, we have our glass membrane. Phase boundary, phase boundary. And then we have our phase boundary to our inner silver silver chloride. So it's getting a little bit complicated. So this is our full cell. So we have uh, this thing interfacing with our um, actual indicator electrode, which is this, this complicated glass membrane electrode. And here on the left, we have our reference electrode. So we have two things that we stick in the solution, this one, as well as our SCE, which I'll just write over here. And then our voltmeter, of course, is still up here. So this will be our pH meter. So uh, this is kind of a simplified diagram of any modern pH meter, which also still uses the same principles of sensing. So the reason this works, where we don't have a half reaction involving a transformation of the protons themselves, is because if you think about what glass is, glass is silicon oxide. So here's my thin layer of glass. And then we have oxides, right? This is polymeric due to periodicity. And et cetera, et cetera. So on the surface are all these little oxygens. So here is, let's say this is inside. Inside our bulb, this is outside. So if, if your solution is very acidic, these will be protonated. So as we so as pH goes down, as pH down, you know, concentration goes up. And then we'll start protonating our surface oxygen. So we now have surface hydroxyls. And this will build up a positive charge on the glass. And then so what this means is that uh, this other side of the glass will feel it. And then as it builds up positive charge, this will change um, how much positive charge might be released from the glass, so protons might be going into solution. And then as cations go into solution, from release from the hydroxyls of the glass, then you have to bounce out that positive, positive charge by having chloride from our silver chloride electrode. And then as that basically will shift the potential of our silver-silver chloride couple, and therefore our indicator electrode will feel the, the concentration of protons outside and respond accordingly. Um, one issue with this electrode, so you can basically still use this same Nernstein relationship of having the indicator potential be equal to some sort of pH change from some reference potential and get out pH. Um, so one issue that I, I, I forgot to mention is that this charge could also be replaced possibly by lithium ions or sodium ions. So this type of glass uh, meter where we have this potentiometer might not be as selective as you like. So there's been advances in recent years that we won't go into for this class in making more selective, permeable uh, measurement tools that can be very selective for what you want to know about for terms of concentration.